Okay, so I got the new iPhone 13s in, and as I was unboxing some of them, I realized there was something interesting going on with the package, so I want to share this with you guys. So normally with an iPhone, there's like a plastic shrink wrap, and it's not there this year, maybe it's in an effort to reduce plastic waste, but if you look over here, there's this plastic tab. Now traditionally when it comes to Apple products, the plastic tab will go on the outside of the box, right? You peel the tab, and then that seal is broken. But this year, that seal is invisible, like it goes on the inside of the package. I'll just show you real quick here. I hope we don't screw this up, but if you peel it, it comes off and it just, it's a piece of plastic, but you don't actually see the seal being broken. And I have this theory. It's really easy to counterfeit these plastic seals, right? If you purchase something and you don't, you don't know the source and how reliable that uh, purchase decision is, this can be easily faked if it's going on the outside. But this year, because it's on the inside, I actually think it's very difficult to create a counterfeit iPhone. That's just a theory. Okay, I wanna show you the insides of these things. I haven't seen this one yet. So we have four devices. They are four different devices and also four different colors. We have on the far left here, the uh, the seal is still broken. Okay, this is the iPhone 13 Pro. iPhone 13 Pro Max in the new Sierra blue color. This is the iPhone 13 mini, which is a nicer blue than last year's blue for sure. And then the last one here is the iPhone 13 regular. So, okay, first impressions. This blue color is a lot nicer in person than it is in photos. Like the original photos and videos I saw of this thing were, it was like a really light pale blue. This is still a light blue, but it's actually a nice kind of shimmer to it. I like this, but the, this one is the one that speaks to me. So last year's iPhone 12 had a blue that was just cheap. It almost felt like a Fisher Price blue. This is a, I like this blue. It's a lot nicer. I'm going on and on about blue, but I like my blue. So this is last year's iPhone 12 Pro. This was the Pacific blue. I like this one the most. If I had to choose a color, the gold this year is a pretty soft gold. It's like a pearly champagne color. I don't love gold devices, so it doesn't speak that much to me, but I really like the pink. This is like a millennial pink. The Sierra blue is like a, it's almost like a baby blue. It's it's very trendy of Apple to go with these colors, man. I feel like they know what they're doing. Their design team, their aesthetic team, they know exactly what they're doing. All right, so I'm gonna pop them out and we'll take a look at the actual devices themselves. Oh, in the box, no charging brick. Uh, it's a standard USB-C to lightning cable. So, yeah, the stainless steel rail. It's a very, very, like this gold color is done well. They know how to do their golds. Yeah, I have, I've always had a preference for the regular devices rails. I like that matte finish. I know it's aluminum and it's not as durable as a stainless steel, but I just like this finish so much more than the kind of shiny finish of the, I mean, look at this. I've handled this for 30 seconds. There's fingerprints all over uh, the shiny stainless steel. Cool. All right. Inside. I'm out, I want to see the 120 hertz display first. That is uh, the most interesting thing to me. Boot her up. Yeah, you can immediately see that 120 hertz. Also the notch, it's supposed to be 20% smaller. I actually want to compare it to an existing 12, just to kind of see them side by side. That looks smaller than 20% smaller. Like if I had to eyeball, I would have been like, that's 40, maybe 50% smaller. But yeah, that's actually very noticeable. I didn't think it'd be that noticeable based on the kind of paper specs of it. But there you go, new notch, smaller notch. Okay, I gotta set these things up. All right, so I spent the past few hours taking a quick look at these phones. The 120 Hertz ProMotion display is nice, it's fluid, but it's so weird to see on an Apple iPhone. Like we've seen this tech on Android phones for years, but to finally see it on an Apple handheld is like, it's a little bit weird on the brain. Uh, I threw a game on it, it's fluid, very nice to look at. There is the ability to disable it, like you can go into the accessibility settings to limit the frame rate. I do feel like this would extend the battery life to some degree, but I'll have to test it more thoroughly in the future review. So the camera systems, I spent a little bit of time with them. They are a noticeable upgrade this year, particularly with low light. Now, I need to spend a lot more time with these devices before I give any kind of conclusion in terms of the camera capabilities, but the initial reaction was they've made a significant step up with their camera systems. The cinematic mode I tested out real briefly 
again, I feel like I need much more time before I give any kind of feedback on that thing. I did check out the macro mode. So I like macro photography and it's nice to see Apple finally putting this feature onto their phones. It uses the ultra wide camera and the system will automatically detect when it thinks that you're trying to take a macro photo. I took some photos of the shrimp in the aquarium while they're running around. It's not as clean of a shot as a still object, but it was impressive that the iPhone could keep up with a moving object. Like I've tried it with the Samsung devices and the OnePlus devices with their macro mode. And when there's a moving object, it's tough. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about are the photographic styles. So both the iPhone 13 and the Pros have the ability to set and customize these picture profiles, or these photographic profiles. So you have stuff that's more vibrant and more contrasty, a warmer shot, a cooler shot, and you can tweak all that stuff in the settings, but all of this stuff is done in advance of you taking the picture. And in addition to that, it's baked into the shot. So if you take a shot that's, I don't know, let's say you have it on a more vibrant, style and you've cranked up the settings, you take it, you can't undo that in the, at least not easily. You have to bring it into an editor and you'd have to try to tweak it and undo that, the processing that was done to it. Now, I get why they're doing this, right? It's the, it's a whole idea of Apple's images being too flat for some people or too natural looking. And now you can preemptively set up your camera so that your shots will always have a particular look to them. And it's cool that they're doing this, but I didn't realize it was baked into the shot. Like I thought it was just a filter that they're applying, but it's part of the image processing as you snap the shot and it'll adjust it based on the skin tones and it'll tweak certain parts of the photo based on the kind of profile that you've set for it. It's weird, but, it's the new Apple. It's very unlike Apple of the past. Okay, so that's a very cursory light look at the new iPhone 13s. Uh, I'll be doing a full review on, I think every single one of these things, but there you go, the new devices. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. I'll see you guys next time.